Don't you hate when you promise to make something for someone and years go by and you still haven't? And what if this person is your mother? It all started when I made decorations for a birthday party years before. Instead of throwing said decorations away, I glued them to a foam board and presented them to the birthday girl as a memento. She loved it, as did my mother who requested one. I bought supplies for the project, but alas, life had other plans and they collected dust on my shelves until the growing weight of disappointing my mother became too much. Since I pinpoint my obsession with all things Victorian to my mother, that became the obvious motif. However, I knew I needed to make it out of more durable materials than wrapping paper and foam board, as I hoped it would grace the walls of my childhood home for years to come, if it turned out as beautiful and ornately Victorian as I imagined. So I will be making paper fans, which look like this. This is a little prototype I made. I will be making different variations of these out of the wallpaper that I had printed on demand, William Morris paper. These are two foot by one foot swatches. They're actually just wallpaper samples that I ordered. It is peel and stick, but I will not be taking the backing off. I just thought it would be the easiest to fold and bend. Maybe I am wrong, but I will do my best with it. I have to flatten these puppies out because they've probably been like this for months. I ordered these a long time ago. This project has been a long time in the making, as I had mentioned before. And the second element that I took directly from Victorian interior design, tin ceiling tiles. What's kind of amazing about this project, I realized after I ordered all this stuff, was as we know from Armstrong History number one, People died via William Morris's arsenic laced wallpaper. But one of the cool things that the tin ceiling tiles did was provide fireproofing. So stores, restaurants on the first floor had this on their ceiling and it actually would protect the upper levels where people had apartments from fire if there was a fire there. So it's kind of like killer life-saving. It's the yin and yang of life. And I kind of like that. I bought a tin tile that was coated to look like copper, as copper panels are expensive, and I felt it would be a waste since it would be mostly covered by the fans. I decided to wash and distress the tile myself, since I didn't like the way the mass-produced options looked, spray painted with way too much machine perfection. I chose a latex off-white chalk paint as I wanted there to be a slight yellow tint to mimic the aging process. If you are working with coated tiles, water-based paint is your jam. However, if working with raw tin, you must use an oil-based paint to prevent rusting. I put two coats on before removing the paint from the raised area with nail polish remover. I found the non-acetone variety worked best. Initially, I used a cotton swab, but it took me over 30 minutes to do just one square. So I switched to a cotton round and this accelerated the process greatly and saved lots of elbow grease. I prepped the tile for sanding by taking some nail polish remover and slightly rubbing it with a Q-tip in the areas I wanted to sand. It's time for me to do the task that I was dreading more than breathing in nail polish remover fumes for 10 hours. I am going to start sanding. I've got my N95 to protect my lungs and I am ready to go. I used various grit levels while sanding as I wanted some areas more distressed than others. While this did at times really hurt my fingers, I found the focus and repetitive motion was almost meditative. It was so satisfying to see my vision become reality with each square I sanded. After each square, I vacuumed the dust. When I was done, I wiped the tile down with a slightly damp microfiber to ensure there was no residue. Once the wallpaper was flattened, I cut the paper into two squares per fan. The William Morris samples comprised the three 12 inch fans. Two 10 inch fans and one eight inch fan were made from cardstock. I scored each square one inch apart to ensure an even crisp fold.
I paper punched the edges of the smallest fan. I made a mistake and did the wrong side, but I didn't panic since I knew I could hide the mistake once I glued the fans together. Some fans had two layers and I paper punched those as well. Now, the folding marathon. Some of the folds didn't align perfectly, so I made adjustments once both squares of each fan were done to even them out as much as possible. On one of the fans, I rounded the edges of the fan top layer so it didn't look exactly like the outer layer. Next, if a fan had more than one layer, I glued them together. Despite all the measuring and scoring, the fan folds didn't come out entirely even, but that's okay. I know that it won't really be noticeable once they're decorated. However, it was super painful. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Next was a really futzy part of the project, tying the fans together. I used fishing line because it's translucent and really strong. I tied knots on each side, alternating as much as I could, so the center was really strong, while at the same time there was a tiny little bit of give in it. I made sure that the ends were even as well, to make sure that the two sides of the fans would line up together. I glued the edges of the fans together with tacky glue. I did this by sectioning off each side with binder clips and gluing in small sections to ensure strong adhesion. It took about three iterations of this to get to the edge of the fan. I let each coat dry overnight before applying the next one.
I realized when I was flattening the wallpaper samples that I chose peel and stick and the back of it is kind of slippery as you know because it's meant to expose a sticky surface so therefore it needs to be something that is easily removable from you know glue. A little nervous about this but what I did was I decided to do a bit of a swatch test to see what adhesive that I currently own in this apartment would stick to such a surface the best if at all. So behold my little swatch that I made. I am going to start tugging on these to see what sticks the best and then that's what I will use because if it certainly works on the back of a sticker it will certainly work on cardstock which would be what the rest of the fans are made out of so I would have complete confidence that it would be able to stick and also stick it to each other because there might be some overlapping of the fans. First was glue all, then Aileen's, then E6000, liquid nails, and Mod Podge. So I'm gonna pull on these. I'm gonna be pretty aggressive. Oh see that came right off. Let's see here. That's pretty strong. Yeah, that's peeling right off. Liquid nails, yeah, liquid nails, nope. And Mod Podge. Wow, I think Mod Podge is the winner. So it's the big day. I am going to be gluing the fans to the tin tile. I'm excited and absolutely terrified at the same time. I'm terrified because this thing has to be packed and wrapped and ready to go by Friday night. And it's Thursday afternoon, like very early afternoon, and I have to glue these. And I'm worried that the glue will not dry fast enough because what if I have to do multiple layers? What if there are other complications? I don't know. But the project has not been perfect. And that's the whole purpose of me doing these projects and documenting them is for me to kind of recover from my perfectionism and to think, that is just no good because it's not perfect. And this project is far from perfect. You can see imperfections everywhere, but at least, at least they show my humanness. And I have to remember that imperfections are a signature. So I will figure this out and it will get done and be fine. Worst case, when I get to my parents, I could always do another layer of glue out of my mother's site in my father's work area and then wrap it up there. So I know that it's not the end of the world, but I am going to go forth and do my best. So let us tarry ho. I decided to use both Mod Podge and Tacky Glue. Mod Podge is watery and I feared the fans would move around as I worked on them. I painted the Mod Podge on the tile and use the tacky glue on the fans and any connection points. Since it was hard to see exactly where the fans were in contact with the tile, I thought using two gluing methods would cover my bases. Adding the second layer of fans was much more difficult than the first, since they would be on angles and only have partial contact with the tile, as well as overlap with each other. It was really hard to see the connection points, so I took pictures to help me plan where to put the glue. They were somewhat helpful, but I still felt I was flying blind, and put glue wherever I saw two surfaces touching. It took me about three and a half hours to glue all the fans to the tin tile.
Oh my gosh. Oh, Sarah. That is beautiful. Wow, you made all that, Sarah. Oh. <laughs> well, I wonder if, you know, if, if, uh, if Bertha Russell would want something like this in her, in her house. I know, it's shocking.